You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future, and I've got with me, as always, Sedge. Hello, Master Procrastinator here. Punk. <laughs> As opposed to my, as opposed to myself, the first thing I think, the first thing I want to do when I get off work is, oh, I think my my followers need another YouTube video. <laughs> You're better oh. than me. Oh no, I just want to feed the algorithm. <laughs> All right, we stopped last time when we were about to meet this new character that Mary is going to introduce to us. I know, I'm really interested in learning more about her. All right, so I think you'll be starting us off, right? Mary, I suppose you'd be more subtle about it. The interest can be dramatic if you're announcing it like that. I spent the entire morning figuring out how to introduce myself to a new body, and you wouldn't ruin it just like that. Do you know how many introductions you can have one person? Just one. One. You thought I'd be subtle. Subtle. Come on. I thought you knew me better. I thought you knew me better than that, kid. The Labrador is about a foot shorter than you, and her stance makes her seem even smaller. She's trying her best to look upset, but it doesn't take a detective to figure out that she's just playing around. Whether she's aware of it or not is another matter entirely. You pray she's just putting on an act, however ridiculous it may be, and that she's not this way with just about everyone she meets. Gosh, you're just- you're such a big meanie. I haven't bought a, bo a box of cupcakes as a welcoming gift. Ah, oh, so that's what I- oh, ugh, dear lord, what is up with me today? <laughs> I got you. Uh, it's fine. So it happens to me. You're always so thoughtful. Hmm, I didn't see you bring it in though. What happened to it? I... I ate it all earlier. <laughs> I skipped lunch to finish compiling those notes you asked me to and I was hungry. I couldn't resist. The cat can't stop herself from laughing at the dog's embarrassing story. Huh, just like you indeed. Don't worry, I'm sure Isaac will mind either way. Anyway, Nats, this is Isaac, a resident synthetic. You should already know everything you need to know about him, but in case you don't, feel free to ask him. Don't worry, he doesn't bite. And Isaac, this is Natalie. She's one of our newest members on the team, relatively speaking. Uh, one thing though, you said that there's no romance in this? No. Okay, because it looks like she's eye-fucking him. Bonk. <laughs> bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm telling my artist and he's gonna judge you very hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you haven't guessed it already, she's gonna be your handler from now on. She'll be in charge of monitoring you throughout the day, as well as help you with that new body of yours. So let's think about your side of you go, we'll be constantly aware of where you are, what you're doing, how you're feeling, and... Well, just about everything else, really. Hope you don't mind. As a matter of fact, you do, and you make sure that Mary knows it with a sharp leer in her direction. But it looks like there's not much you can do about it either way, so you pray she's just exaggerating as usual. Still, a new handler? Whoever this Natalie is, she definitely doesn't look the part, or acts like it. Mary sure has a way of corrupting everyone around her into a funny-looking gremlin. You pray, that, you pray that the dress does not make the priest in this case, else this would be a circus, and these two the clowns. Well, that's just great. You're really killing me today, aren't you, Doc? Though, let me guess. Arthur was already doing all that for you without me knowing, huh? The cat gives you one of her usual coy grins. One of her telltale signs of assent. Mary, you're making me look bad on purpose, aren't you? That's so mean! You know I can do that just fine on my own. The feline crosses her arms as she laughs at the Labrador's joke. I guess I am doing that, huh? How about I leave you two alone for a while? That way you can properly introduce yourselves to each other. Mary turns to face you, a cheeky smile on her face. You don't mind that, do you? For once, you don't need to think all that hard about an answer to such a silly question. A few minutes of that you breathing down my neck? Sounds like a dream. Huh. Looks like your humor's improving at least. Here's hoping your mood does, too. I'll head over to my computer and type some, down some stuff before I forget. Catch you two in a bit. Without further fanfare, the cackling cat swiftly returns to her post in the corner of the room. You have a feeling that she could still hear you from over there. Then again, you've seen how absorbed Mary can get in her work when she wants to be. It's difficult to say whether she'll actually follow your conversation or not. 
You turn to face this Natalie, devoting your full attention to her. She's young, around 20, 25 at the latest, and carries herself with a mixture of unbridled exuberance and unchecked curiosity. She almost looks like a time bomb of pure emotion, ready to explode at a moment's notice. Although apparently she's though apparently just as deranged as her boss, she gives you a completely different vibe from the cat lady. A more wholesome one, for sure, though there's likely more under the surface you still don't know. You ponder whether you should break the silence and the ice, and the ice yourself, but before you can get a word in, the impatient dog beats you to the punch. Nice to meet you. I'm Natalie, your resident handyman... woman... anyway... I do just about anything Mary tells me to do, really. Though I suspect there'll be a lot less of that now that I'm officially your handler. Either way, I'm sure it'll be fun. It's nice to meet you too. I'm Isaac, though I suppose you knew that already. I did, but nothing beats hearing from you. Words in lab report really tell you so much about the real thing. To be honest, you're the first synthetic I've interacted with. It's a totally new experience for me. So, yeah, I'm a little excited. <laughs> The glee in the canine's voice and the glimmer in her hopeful eyes betray her enthusiasm. She seems rather thrilled about her assignment, or perhaps just by the idea of meeting you. I see. I'm sorry about the way Mary introduced us, by the way. You seem pretty bummed out by the way she went about it. Oh, that? It's alright. I was mostly joking. I told her how I planned to go about reading you, and she probably did things this way to spare the embarrassment. Uh, how so? Um, well... Anyway, I've known Mary for more than a few months now, so I already know what to expect from her. I know how crazy she can be at times. At times? Okay, maybe all the time? But I swear, she grows on you. Eventually. I, I think. You certainly hope that'll be the case. But yeah, I really hope that Mary's idea of introductions didn't give you any weird ideas about me. I promise I'm not as bad as she made me look. I, I don't really think it was Mary who didn't portray you in the best of lights. It didn't even take a second for your words to plunge the dog, to plunge the dog into a quiet but nevertheless teary mess. But what I mean is, I, I didn't even pay attention to any of that because I was just, I was too busy. Thinking about how awesome it'll be to have you as a friend. The Labrador loudly, gra loudly gasped at your hastily improvised, though not entirely false, explanation. Really? Oh my gosh! Do you really use the term, the friend word, with me? So soon? My gosh, I feel so honored! I just met my first synthetic, and he's already my friend! It's so awesome! The dog's reaction is very much unlike that of those people at the train station, or your fellows at the condo you live in. Unlike their skeptical and oftentimes frightened gazes, her genuine wonder and amazement sends warm vibes straight into your heart, tugging at its strings. Perhaps she's a little over the top, and you'd definitely appreciate her if she could lower her voice so that the whole building didn't have to know what's on her mind 24-7. But you find yourself inclined to ignore all that, much like how she's ignoring that f she's ignoring that fuel runs through your veins instead of blood. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm being a little unprofessional right now. What I mean to say is... <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to working with you, Isaac. Oh, then please, call me Nats. That's what everyone here calls me. Working with me? You mean, we're co-workers. I thought you were working for me. Wait, that came out wrong. I, you're not my servant or anything. I think I mean, of course you're not. I... Hey, don't worry. I, go, I get what you mean. I am here to help you. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I like to think we're both working toward a common goal. Hmm? You want to find out where you're still human inside or if you're a machine, right? That's what we're trying to find out too. Me, Mary, and everyone else. It helped you adapt to your new body. I like to think I'm playing my part in this project just the same as everyone else. Much like you will, just by existing. Finding answers to life's greatest questions. Finding solutions to humanity's greatest problems. That's part of the reason why I joined Pandora. And I bet that's part of the reason why you're here too. So, I'm looking forward to doing that more, working by your side. The words that come out of Natalie's mouth are definitely corny, but they also seem as genuine as the rest of her personality. She seems to take a great she seems to take great pride in her role here, and her aspirations are noble if nothing else. Somehow her earnest but youthful energy manages to curve your lips into a smile. Yeah, same here. Thanks, Nats. 
The girl chuckles like a schoolgirl upon hearing you use her nickname, but soon manages to bring herself to a stop. Hey, thank me, friend. Just gotta be of help. You're happy with how your conversation has been going so far. Now the amount of people you can regularly chat with has dropped down to sing to the single digits, conversing and hanging out are swiftly becoming your favorite activities. Though, perhaps you should start asking some more useful questions now the introductions are finally out of the way. Either way, you seem to have accepted the idea of synthetics pretty fast. Even I still can't wrap my head around it, and I'm literally one of them. Are you sure you haven't met any others before me? Like, not even, like, glanced at one of the hallways or something? Speaking of, you've yet to see another synthetic yourself. You expected the place to be stacked full of them, and yet you haven't even seen a single one of the last two weeks. Curious. And slightly unsettling. Nope. Believe it or not, you're the only one who lives nearby for now. Really? But I thought this was Pandora Labs HQ. It is, but Pandora's facilities spread out all over the globe, and many of them are equipped with the same tech that was used to help you transition. Huh. For some reason, I thought this was the only place around that could do something like that. I mean, the technology is still experimental, so there aren't too many of them out there. But logistically speaking, when you're trying to save the lives of people so close to death, it's preferable to have the tools already on site than displaying them all the way here. I see. So I wasn't the only one who was approached in dire circumstances like that. You're not sure how to feel about this revelation. On one hand, you're glad that Pandora is giving some people who would have otherwise died a new chance at life. On the other, you wonder whether that's only because people so close to death are far less likely to reject their offer. The Labrador notices your uncertainty almost immediately and tries to offer some comfort. Yeah. I hope you don't feel like Nero is trying to take advantage of you back then. I assure you, she always has the best of intentions. While you still have some doubts, you decide to accept that explanation for the time being. I don't. Don't worry. I know she was just trying to help out, and I'm thankful for her. I'm thankful to her for being there when I needed it most. I'm just struggling to take it all in, you know? I get that. That's okay. I know some pretty complicated stuff we're dealing with, and oftentimes pretty depressing to boot. Just know that I'll always be here if you need a hand processing everything, okay? You nod at your handler a final time as you try to steer the conversation back to where it started. So I take it that every other synthetic happens to live elsewhere for now. Pretty much. Most of our synthetics are currently living in specialized facilities across the globe, away from regular humans. The idea was to give you guys comfortable in a secluded environment for a while, to help you get your bearings while the climate of the surrounding technology became a little more... amiable. But I hear you insist on getting back to regular life sooner than anyone else. Yeah, you got me on that one. I couldn't stand being cooped up in a lab for any longer. Not while... You hesitate to speak your mind any further. Let's just say... Let's just say I still have some things I need to do out there. I totally understand. Either way, I'm happy to request was approved. Given that your first synthetic trend could exist alongside regular humans, there's a lot of potential data that could be gathered for, for you that wouldn't be available in a lab environment. Is that why you're so excited? Well, I'm mainly happy to regard what you wanted. However, as a scientist, the process of new intel to be learned is also very exciting. You can't really falter for that, you reason. After all, if it wasn't you stuck in a limbo between life and death, you'd probably find your circumstances quite interesting yourself. You figured it'd be polite to offer some assistance to the helpful Labrador in her endeavor. How would it go about gathering all this intel for you? You can help out just by living a regular life, which just happens to be one of the main things you're aiming for with this project. It'd be pointless to live forever for the rest of the world shun your way at every turn. That's why we need people like you proving to the humans out there that you're just the same as them. You should just try to lead a normal life, and ask close to what you have before your transition. That's all we can ask of you. And I'll be here to help you should anything come up. I see. It's definitely a much better arrangement than, than I first gave it credit for back at the hospital. Yep, and of course, as you go about living your life, it's possible that people's perception of synthetics will improve. That might inspire other synthetics to step out into the world as well. I'd love to have you meet other people like you in the future, even though right now they live so far away. I'm sure that would do wonders for your morale. Eh, I don't know about that. I'm not great when it comes to formal meetups like that. Oh, it wouldn't be formal or anything, just a casual meet and greet between Android bros. Help you get accustomed to each other as well as humans. 
I don't know. I feel like it'd be far easier for me to invite you out for lunch than another synthetic I've never even heard of before. You really, you only realize what you just said after Natalie does. Whoa, did you just ask <laughs> me out? <laughs> no, I... Got any I, weird I, ideas? Bunk. <laughs> no, I was just trying to make an example, I... The Labrador laughs off your embarrassment, though her cheeks remain as red as tomatoes. <laughs> I know, I know. Still, that was super cute. I'm gonna be blushing for the rest of the week at this rate. Please don't. But yeah, if you ever want to invite me out somewhere for lunch or dinner, feel free to do it any time. I get the feeling that we'll be dealing with each other for a long time to come, so we might as well, so we might as well grow to be close friends while we're at it. As the dog starts hopping in place like a little kid at a candy shop, cute giggles escaping her lips, you end up blushing a little yourself. She's a very adorable character. Thanks. Natalie definitely has some rather interesting ways of showing her excitement, and not a lot of ways to hide it, it seems. Ah, uh, you're the best. I'm definitely going to take you up on an offer sometime soon. We'll be talking over a call pretty often from now on, but I feel like interacting with you face-to-face -face would be even more awesome. Wow, I leave you alone for five minutes and you're already playing a date? You sure are a player, Isaac. Just like that, Mary appears right behind you, a smug grin on her cocky face. How did you do that? I didn't even hear you stop. I didn't even hear you stop typing on that PC. Charisma isn't the only skill I max during my life, Isaac. When you reach my age, you're either dead or you've picked up a trick or two that can prevent that. Neither of you are prepared for her to show up unannounced like that, so she takes great pleasure in laughing at your goofy expressions as you try to recompose yourselves. <sighs> at least you try. At least you try. Oh, at least you try. Mary, it wasn't like that. Stop trying to make everything weird. He probably thinks I'm a creep without your help. Come on, you know I've never, you know I never thought that. Keep it together. You only make her tease you more if you keep this up. It looks like you do know me a little after all, Isaac. With the room returning to some semblance of calm, the scientist attempts to resume from where she left off. Anyway, if you guys are finished, we can... Dr. Yeah. Shelley, are you in there? A stern, booming voice beckons Mary from beyond the door, making all three of you jump at once. It's intense, angry, distinctly masculine, and it doesn't sound at all like anyone you've ever met. However, something about its tone and urgency already has you on edge. You glance over at the two women before you, looking to them for answers. Natalie appears to be frightened beyond description all of a sudden, while Mary merely resigns herself to a defeated sigh. Uh, what does he want this time? I, I don't know. Y you think he's mad at me? If I, I find it unlikely. He doesn't even know you exist half the time. Nah, most likely has it out for me for some reason again. Unless... The cat turns to face you, an inquisitive gaze in her eyes. You're beginning to feel a tad uncomfortable at the clear lack of an explanation. You decide to take action now before you start getting irritated by it. I'm sorry, can someone please explain to me what's going... Before you can utter another word, you hear the entrance to the room slamming wide open, immediately triggering your fight-or-flight instincts. The silhouette of a powerful, imposing dragon stands near the doorframe. His smooth, long tail swings wildly behind him as he enters, almost like a whip. Ooh, cool design. He makes no eye contact with you as he grows closer, nor with the Labrador that hid herself behind you as soon as, as, soon as he appeared. No, his focus is entirely on the annoyed-looking feline standing behind you. His deep blue eyes are lodged straight into her like daggers, while his hands are firmly gripping a large tablet similar to Mary's. Good afternoon, Dr. Shelley. I see your office remains as messy as ever. I hope you don't mind me trampling where some of these papers scatter about during my visit. Papers that I remember asking to pick up from the floor numerous times. The feline tries to reply as nonchalantly as she can, though you can tell that her tone doesn't match her true feelings. Well, if it isn't Jasper. For the record, I was going to do that later today. Jasper barely raises an eyebrow as he coldly and dryly replies. Dr. Shelley, I asked you that a month ago. The drink's delivery of that line almost makes you laugh on its own, though you catch yourself just in time to avoid a second painful death. The cat, on the other hand, seems entirely in phase in spite of the chilling atmosphere that this Jasper summoned in the room. Uh, well, I've just been rather busy as of late as all. 
Couldn't find a time to get around to it to, until today. Right. Busy. Drake shoots a sharp gaze in your direction, which is somehow enough to send your heartbeat in a craze. You're not sure why, but you have a feeling that this man isn't here to praise or commend you as freely as the two women in the room. I can see that. I know firsthand how busy this new synthetic of yours is keeping everyone here. If you were unsure of whether he hated you or not before, you're pretty sure now. The guy absolutely hates your guts. But why? As you're wondering that, you hear Mary speak up once again. So, to what do I owe this sudden, unexpected, and totally unscheduled visit? I know you're not very keen on seeing me unless you have to. I have a few reasons. One of them being, I wish to see the latest black hole in our finances with my own eyes. The drake grows even closer, his eyes firmly locked onto yours, or the representation on your visor anyway. You briefly think about retreating from the encroaching man, though you fear that you might trample Natalie in the process, except... As you turn to look at her, you realize that she's nowhere to be seen. You soon spot her hiding in a corner of the room, as far away from the action as she can be. You don't blame her for taking her chances to her chance to run, though you still wish she was here with you braving the oncoming storm. And speaking of, you find Jasper's angry muzzle mere inches away from your own right as you turn around. You must be the new synthetic. Isaac, correct. I've heard a lot of things about you. I... See? You're a troublesome heap of trash is what you are. Do you have any idea of the trouble you cause this company because of your decision to leave the labs? Your reckless actions are beyond reproachable. The amount of work and money you've cost this establishment in the last few days is bigger than the yearly revenue of a small company. Did you even consider all this as you whimsically decided to return to your old life based on nothing more than this old treatise advice? It feels like standing in the midst of a volcano's fiery eruption as the man throws insult after insult your way, somehow never losing his composure as he does so. You briefly consider giving him a piece of your mind as well. But a cold feeling in your gut convinces you to go about asking for clarifications in a more subtle way. I'm sorry, who are you again? Drake scoffs at your query, almost as if you'd asked him what 2 plus 2 equals. Really? You never told him? Would you believe that it never came up? Right. Of course it didn't. I can see why you're assigned as another teacher. Very well. Someone has to formally introduce a synthetic to the company, and it might as well be me. He briefly pauses as if to gather his energy, then resumes his explanation with the same coldness and distance in his voice that you're by now accustomed to. I am Jasper Morgan, CEO of Pandora Inc. These are my labs, those two are my scientists, and you are my synthetic. He's the CEO? The realization startles you beyond belief. You're about to tell Mary Superior to fuck off, and it doesn't look like he'd, had, he'd have appreciated it nearly as much as she would have. You're thankful to yourself for staying your tongue in spite of the challenge, though it doesn't look like the Drake has any intention of staying his. I don't think that means I find you endearing, however. Assuming you can even think. I'm merely reminding you of whose advice, whose orders, you're really supposed to listen to. The reptile speaks to you with a certain contempt in his voice that you definitely didn't expect from someone in his position. After all, according to Mary, you're Pandora's greatest achievement, a miracle of science. And yet, why does this man treat you so poorly? It certainly doesn't make asking further, quer further queries any easier, though. Any, sorry, let me try that again. It certainly doesn't make asking further queries any easier, though you try to keep your resentment hidden inside for the time being. Pardon me, but I don't recall you giving me any advice in the past. In fact, I don't recall ever seeing you before either. That's correct. Truth be told, I trust I'm married to give you a good idea of the things you were and weren't supposed to do in my stead. But like always, I made a grandiose leap of judgment in doing so. Allow me to rectify that mistake. The man takes another step towards you, but the cat quickly slips between you two. Listen, whatever you think you know, forget it. I gave Isaiah permission to return to his old life for a reason. It was a necessary step to take to, to take to show the public the merit in our work, as well as help us analyze new data that... 
Yes, yes. I'm well aware of how you justified it to the owners. A load of nonsense, really. But it was enough to convince them that you do as you please yet another time. Um, excuse me, who are the owners again? The drink sighs as he shakes his head yet again, quite clearly upset at all the questions you've been asking. Probably told him nothing, did you? Though I suppose it was my fault for believing that you did. The owners are the shareholders of Pandora Inc. They know the capital allows us to function, and they're in many ways responsible for our work here. Unfortunately, as of late, they become more and more disinterested in their duties, preferring to delegate everything to the absolute buffoon that is the cat lady over there. Oh, please. You think there's something new? The owners have trusted me and my team long before you began working here. And with some luck, they'll realize the flaws in the decision long before they'll be gone. But let's return to us, shall we? I wasn't quite finished talking to you. And believe me, we have much to discuss. He makes as if to take another step, but once again the cat refuses to let him get any closer. If you have anything you wish to discuss with Isaac, you're free to mention it to me first. Jesper hesitates for a moment, but ultimately relents. Very well. It will at least spare me the trouble of explaining everything to that glorified toaster this way. And besides, the android already knows what they did. You can feel a maelstrom of rage boiling underneath the man's voice, though the mere implication of his wording is enough to put you on edge. As you wonder just what in the world he could be referring to, the reptile begins fiddling with his tablet for a second before handing it over to the feline. I thought I'd come here personally to show you a neat little video that is currently making the rounds across the web. I figured you would be interested in giving the subject of the recording. Ah, oh, is it a puppy video? I love puppy videos, how do you know? It is, in fact, very much not a puppy video. Unless, of course, you're talking about that untrained mat over there. Yeah, more vile vitriol freely spewed against you, though you suspect that this time it is somehow far more justified. See for yourself. As the video begins to play, you hear the, you hear the sounds of a crowd, of a commotion, of a train station. Oh no... You've realized what is going on long before you hear your own voice shouting out loud in the background of the recording. You had completely forgotten about the incident from this morning, and the many things you said and did as you tried to free yourself from the grasp of those two policemen. At the time, you felt as though your reaction was entirely justified, especially after what Mary told you a few days earlier. However, as you relieve that dreadful experience, you begin to fear that things may not have been so simple after all. As the video continues to play in Mary's hands, you hear Jasper address you once again. I think this footage needs no further comment. I do not know to what extent you comprehend the consequences of your actions, Synthetic, but I trust even you can understand the problem here. You openly rebelled, insulted, and borderline assaulted two officers of the law, in broad daylight no less. Do you have any idea of what you just did? Of what you just caused? You try to explain yourself in spite of the overwhelming evidence against you. I know the police department likely has it out for me by now, but... Or you? Who said anything about you? The Drake grimly chuckles as his voice grows even loud, ever louder. I'm talking about the company. Our brand, our reputation. Everything. That's what you threaten your reckless actions. Not yourself. I couldn't care less if those idiots compacted you into trash and left you rot in a ditch somewhere. But that's not who the government slackies will come for. No, they'll be coming for us. Legal battles for tens of thousands of billions of dollars. One after another. I can already imagine the headache. The reptile suddenly turns to face the feline once again, choosing to forego his rage in favor of pure, unbridled disdain. Needless to say, this is like enough to get your entire project shut down, Dr. Shelley. The people up there were suspicious of the danger your synthetics posed to the world before. Now they've every reason to be certain of it. Do you finally comprehend the situation, Dr. Dearest? Or are you going to be stubborn until the end? This is what happens when you let an overhyped text-to-speech program act freely without consequence. When I let you act freely without consequence. The cat remains silent as she finishes watching the video. 
She's definitely pondering something in that head of hers, though neither you nor the reptile can fathom what it could be. However, eventually... Are you finished? Honestly, you're making a much bigger deal of this thing than it really deserves to be. Mary's careless words and cocky attitude managed to stun the drake for a second, though he quickly recovers. Excuse me? Come on, you got all that from a 10 minute video of a synthetic? Of an American righteously standing up to an oppressive police force? Crass about telling you about your glasses. Have you finally lost your mind? No, I'm just reading the comments. The woman hands the tablet back to its owner, who begins strolling through the comments at supersonic speed while she further while she further explains her point. You'll find that most of the people who saw that video, including those who uploaded in the first place, are over supportive of our little android's actions. Sure, there's a sizable minority that isn't quite as exuberating, but those are always to be expected and not all representative of the whole situation. The younger demographics are especially among the most vocal about their support for Isaac's actions, Though I suspect the older ones won't take long to be convinced to join them. I see. Jasper puts down the tablet and begins to wonder about something, muttering words under his breath that not even you can pick up. I'm not quite enough to fully convince everyone of our synthetic humanity, but I believe this will be great advertising for a nascent project. The Drake audibly scoffs upon hearing the feline's thoughts. Re advertising, of course. I'm sure our lawyers will be very glad that we'll be spending our money on them instead of our PR team. After all, it doesn't matter if people somehow wound up to like that android if the government decides to crack down this whole operation. And I find no reason to believe that they won't. I beg to disagree. Again, the Drake raises both an eyebrow and his voice as his patience grows thinner. Surely you jest. The thing literally disregarded the orders of an officer. Insulted them to their face, tossed them around like they were rag dolls. The people might be quick to forgive such crimes, but the authorities surely will not. Mary doesn't even flinch as she dismisses Jasper's entire point as if it were a temper tantrum. Simply put, I find it very hard to believe that Isaac could be convicted of those crimes. Then perhaps you'll transition to a new brain, because that one's clearly not working. The evidence is clear as day. Evidence, you say? Why, there's plenty of that, of course. For a crime our synthetic here cannot currently commit. Both you and the large man struggle to understand what in the world the cat could possibly be talking about. Here to explain why. Or is that yet another of your groundless opinions? Hmm, that's strange. I thought I sent you a memo about that already some time ago. Ah, oh, well. The cat gives the Labrador in the corner of the room a coy smile, to which the latter quietly nods. Natalie swiftly heads to Mary's desk, picks up a handful of documents among many, then personally hands it to Jasper, never once daring to look him in the eyes as she does so. As she returns to her neat little hiding spot, the reptile already hard at work analyzing the papers, Mary briefly explains the contents of those files. These are the findings of our internal law team, who my task to analyze the current normative environments surrounding synthetics, as well as a couple articles detailing the last few Congress debates on our technology. As you are well aware, our current objective here at the lab is to find definitive proof that our synthetics are living beings with the same intellect and rights as any other human. However, it's not only us who would like to be certain of that. Congress is currently debating that very question as we speak, with no clear answer yet in sight. We suspect these discussions will continue for the next few months at the very least, possibly until next year. They're debating on whether I'm a human or not? The idea that your humanity or lack thereof could be decided by a bunch of powerful people simply like that is just... so grim. You wouldn't know how else to describe this feeling. Noticing your discomfort, Mary is quick to explain herself further. As far as law is concerned, yes. It's a rather touchy subject, you know. The current law system was built around humans, which have some rights and duties inherent to them due to their human status. It is because of his status that they can prosecute under the law, for example. After all, it'd be ridiculous to indict a pet cat for scratching their owner, or a car because its engine is somehow busted all of a sudden. To prosecute you for a crime that you supposedly committed would be the same thing as admitting that you are on the same cognitive level as a human being, an idea that many of those politicians are vehemently opposed to. It doesn't take you long to figure out what the scientist is trying to hint at, in spite of how unbelievable the mere thought of it is. 
So, you're saying I can't commit crimes right now? Pretty much. For now, you're in legal limbo where you're neither a person or an object, which practically bars you from entering a court of law. It won't last forever, mind you, but it's a perfectly acceptable compromise for the time being. That is a rather liberal interpretation of the facts you just shared, Dr. Shelley. It appears as though the drink won't be as easily convinced as the cat thought he would. Just because he can't be prosecuted doesn't mean that we won't. Until those morons of Congress decide otherwise, that thing over there is company property. That means that we are the ones liable in the event of damages to other people's things or lives. But you assume that Isaac is just, yet, is just another AI, whose faults can be attributed solely to awful programming. However, that is still under debate. Assuming that our synthetics are living beings, and that their decisions are entirely theirs, a court cannot in good faith argue that we're to blame for any damages they cause. The Drake loudly exhales and shakes his head as he turns away from the confident woman before him. Oh, please. Oh, please what, exactly? I answer your every question, work through every problem you brought up. What more could you possibly want from me? When Jasper turns around again, his expression is the definition of rage. I want you to face reality for a goddamn second is what I want. You think you can keep playing this dangerous game forever without fear of any sort of consequence? At some point, all these debates you mentioned will end. The customers will figure out the truth, or will reasonably reach a conclusion if you continue clinging to denial. And the truth is that you're full of shit. This whole project is that you know it. All you're doing is setting stage for a new Chronos disaster. Do you really think you're the first wannabe scientist slash necromancer trying to pass off for advanced AIs as real people? Excuse me? You're not sure what that man meant by that, but you find yourself unable to care right now. Overtaken by a sudden self-righteous fury, you begin to feel as though you've let this man harass both you and your friends for more than enough. However, as you begin to approach him with a clenched fist at your side, Mary gets right up to her superior's face, looking thoroughly unafraid. Listen here, you oversized runt. I know you're still looking for reasons to burn this part of the ground, but you won't find any here. I'm far more prepared than you think I am. Until we prove once and for all the true nature of synthetic intelligence, you can keep all your needed opinions to yourself. I'm sure I'll be able to work just fine without them. A brief, uncomfortable silence follows the Siamese's hatred-fueled rant. You're not quite sure where this talk is going to head next. Any further issues you'd like to bring to my attention? You spot a myriad of veins threatening to burst on the drake's face, including many that you're not quite sure are supposed to be there. You fear that his reply to his subordinate's aggressive tone might be loud enough to make the whole ceiling crumble on top of you. Is this fear what the, is this fear what the knights of the fables of old felt as they were about to withstand a dragon's fiery breath? No. Not to yours, anyway. Your answers are sufficient for the time being. Evidently not, as all that boiling rage that threatened to erupt at any moment seems to have vanished in the blink of an eye. As you ask yourself what just happened, you nearly trip over yourself as Jasper deftly approaches you once again, having somehow managed to dart past the scientist. Listen well, Synthetic. I have no care in a slice about what that lunatic told you. I feel proven otherwise you are property, and you'll behave as such from now on whether you like it or not. What you do your time with the money we throw into this flaming dumpster of a project is none of my concern. But if you ever cause trouble for us again, there will be consequences. Is that clear? The thought of the thought of decking this guy right on his nose once again pops in your mind. Given everything this man has said to both you and your friends, you feel that it'd be a fitting end to the shit show you bore witness to. However, you have enough sense left in you to keep your feelings at bay one last time. Crystal clear, sir. Well then, with all due respect. Just like that, the Drake quietly turns around and heads for the door. He almost hits Mary with his shoulder on his way out, though the cat dodges to the side just in time. You think for a moment that the worst has passed, but that's when you hear his voice a final time as he opens the door. Dr. Shelley, do not think even for a second that this is over. And so the dragon leaves the room just as rudely as he entered it. His long tail lingers in the doorframe for a while, but soon that too vanishes. He's gone, of that you're certain. 
yet his words and presence still linger heavily in the room. You feel like the air around you now weighs twice as much as it should. Mary takes a deep breath, then resumes talking with a pitch and a level of exasperation she you hadn't seen her show before. God, what a nuisance. What does he even think he is? They're still a little shocked from what transpired. Natalie steps up to entertain the irritated feline's rhetorical question. Um, the CEO? You know, the guy paying our bills? Nah, that's the HR division's job. The CEO's just a guy who can fire us at will. The Labrador puffs loudly, as if someone just decked her in the stomach. How was that an improvement? Relax. Just because he could fire me doesn't mean he will. He'll never say it out loud, but I'm far too valuable for this company to get rid of. What? What about me? The cat pretends to think about that question for a few seconds, a large grin already plastered onto her face. Hmm, I guess I can see why you're so scared now. Mary! Okay, okay, I'm just messing with you, I swear. Though the cat tries to laugh everything off as if it were of no consequence, you remain worried and doubtful. Come on, Mary, be serious, this is nothing to laugh at. The guy was trouble and you know it, and the things he said, I... I know that. Of course I know that, I just... The Siamese sighs as she ponders how best to reply. There is no reason for either of you to panic. He can't put his hands on my entourage or my synthetics while going through me first. At the end of the day, there's a pissy snake with a poisonous tongue and an ego too big for his head to fit in. That's not the point. I just... I just feel like you're going out of your way to make a guy your enemy. Like, there has to be some way of dealing with him without escalating a situation like you did, right? You take care of him for now, that's true. But next time he has it out for you or Isaac, he'll probably even more... You're probably even more relentless in his approach. Is that really the smartest way to go about doing this? Mary takes another deep breath as she shakes her head, unconvinced. Look, the guy's a massive prick. You've seen how he acts when he feels like he's right. I'm already pushing my limits by not decking him the snout of his every time he shows up. You can't reasonably expect me to treat him any better than that. The Labrador looks stunned and dejected, unsure of whether to press the issue any further with her superior or not. The Siamese sighs as she turns to look at you, a curious look on her face. What about you, Isaac? What do you think? Me? It takes you some time to answer, and there's quite a lot to consider, and even more than you still don't know. From what little you've seen, you can perfectly understand the scientist's reaction. However, you also agree with Natalie's sentiment that her approach was far from professional. Not to mention, all you know is the cat side of the story. Knowing her character, there's likely plenty of reasons for Jasper to have contempt for her. You decide to reply as neutrally as you can, so as to not side with either of the two women. Well, I understand where you're coming from, Mary, but I also think that Natalie's right. You were pretty confrontational back there. Huh, you think so too? You silently nod, hoping that the Labrador will pick up from there. Yeah, like, I get that there's black blood between the two, but... Were all those jabs and insults really necessary? Maybe not, but I really don't care. That bloodhound's been a pain in the ass for as long as he's been here. Always meddling where he shouldn't be. Always trying to throw wrenches in my projects. The way I see it, a little petty revenge where I can get it doesn't hurt. Especially if I can get a laugh out of it. But that's... Natalie makes as if to say something, but her face tells you that she's too worried to openly speak her mind. You figure that she's just worried that she's not supposed to be this brutally honest with her superior. Maybe you should help her out. If it were just you and that guy duking out, I'd understand. But you've got a whole team under you, and you're unknowingly dragging them into this mess. The more your conflict with your superior escalates, the more unnerved your, your, co the more unnerved your workers are going to feel. Or if something were to happen to them because of all this. Now it's... Think of Natalie and the others, Mary. Are they really worth less than, than, than what few laughs you can get out of Jasper? The doctor makes as if to say something, but then stops herself part partway through until only a faint sigh escapes her lips. Alright, alright. I get it. I get where you're coming from. Oh, uh, just quick. Uh, do you know how much more we have to get through? Uh, very little. Okay. If you two are so concerned, I'll promise I'll try to cut down the sassel when that barkhead Nimrod 
with that bark head of Nimrods around. The well being of my team is always my top priority, and I'll be sure to remember that from now on whenever he's around. You know, if he starts threatening or intimidating you guys again under my watch, I can't promise I'll be gentle. You can't be sure that Mary will actually follow up on that promise, and from the looks of it, neither can Natalie. But on the other hand, she seems rather genuine when she emphasizes how much she treasures you two and the others. Perhaps there's some hope she'll take your worries to heart after all. Either way, one thing I can't understand is how somebody like that is even allowed to work here. I get that he's the CEO and stuff, but I never imagined he'd be so... arrogant. Though to be fair, Mary hasn't done a great job so far at setting up an example of decency for this company's employees. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that he's got his position partly because his grandfather is Pandora's majority shareholder. Like old Big Ray says, that one's what, this one was rigged from the start. No way! So he gets to act as he pleases just because his grandfather's a big shot? And as I said, that's only part of the reason why he got what he did. As much as it pains me to admit it. That Drake's pretty skilled when it comes to numbers and business. Even better than most scientists and mathematicians I've interacted with. Not to mention, that tough guy attitude is perfect on seeing other businessmen around. He was practically born for this job. The guy's good, I'll give him that. The past 10 years have been pretty rocky for the company, and it's only thanks to his leadership that Pandora's managed to continue its business undisturbed. He is, by all means, irreplaceable. Wow, I never thought you'd end up praising him that much. It's not praise if I'm just saying the objective truth. He may be a prick, but he knows what he's doing. In the end, all that matters in life, or at the very least in this company, is results. Both me and Jasper are well aware of that. Hence why we are both still working here, in spite of our unique predispositions. You feel like you're starting to understand the dynamics of this place a bit better. Though, knowing how Jasper could behave like that and get away with it doesn't make you any less angry about it. Still. What about the things he said to me? Sorry? Come on, you know what I'm talking about, when he started ranting about you being a hack and all that. I shouldn't be surprised, given how hostile he's acted since he came through at that door, but at that moment I almost thought that... You're not sure what you were thinking at that moment, truth be told. Everything happened so fast, it was hard to retain any memory of what the dragon actually shouted. Noticing your discomfort, Mary tries to console you as best she can. Look, Jasper's opinions are... complicated. And pretty stupid, if you take my word for it. He just hates everything that I do, no matter what it is. I've been like that since the moment he got here, actually. And sadly, that everything includes this project, and includes you. But, why? I get that me causing that fight with the police didn't make his mood any better, but... The Siamese sighs as she tiredly shakes her head. Take my advice, kid. Stop thinking about that idiot. I stopped trying to figure him out a long time ago, and I never saw the point of doing that to begin with. Don't worry about him, or about what you did this morning. You're just an innocent bystander, wrapped up in a mess you don't deserve to be in. Let me handle all this nonsense for you, okay? You want to press for more information, but it appears as though the cat's already been rather exhaustive with you. Besides, maybe Mary's right. Maybe this really isn't your war to fight. Maybe it really should. Maybe it really would be best if you tried to shove this awful encounter with Jasper to the back of your mind and pray that you never have to relive it. It's been working somewhat fine with the rest of your terrible memories, after all. All right, I trust. Hey guys. Natalie beckons for your attention. I don't mean to be a party pooper, but it's getting really late. Huh? What do you mean? It's only... The doctor grabs the tab... The, gra uh, the doctor grabs the tablet she always carries in her coat and turns it on. She seems rather surprised by what she sees, as well as a little annoyed. 4.43pm. Already? That's really funny, because it's 4.39 here. <laughs> wow. Ugh, that whole shit show took up way too much time. We still need to organize all the data we gathered this morning. Not to mention, there's a train I need to catch in less than an hour. This afternoon's events were so draining you completely forgot about what you were going to do upon leaving this place. I haven't even bought the ticket yet. I was hoping you could teach me how to do that on my own. Yep, I figured. Ugh, oh, what a bother. I'm really sorry, and I was looking forward to that too. However, given everything I need to do, I... The canine steps forward once again, a mere confident smile, a more confident smile on her face. Don't worry, Mary. I'll help Isaac get home, as this thing is my duty now, after all. Besides, you need your own dual that boring lab stuff anyway, right? 
The cat looks over to the Labrador with a wide grin on her face. You're right, and I don't. That actually works out pretty well, Nats. I knew I could count you for this. Natalie giggles happily while Mary turns to face you. You don't mind if Nats takes over for me, right? You mean just as a helper, or in general? The doctor cracks a laugh at your playful jabbing, knowing you well enough already to figure out that you're just messing around. Hey now, you know you can get rid of me that easy. It's like a Jasper, he's been trying to do that for ten years now. Either way, I'm off to work. Talk to you tomorrow. See ya! The two of you wave the cat goodbye as she leaves the room, leaving you and Natalie behind. So, I guess I should start heading out. Can't afford to waste any more time. I still have a train to catch. Right. Do you know how to... Leave? Yeah, I'm familiar with this place already. I was stuck here for quite a while, after all. Turn left at the exit, second door down the hallway, then down the elevator I go. Wow. Not even I know this place that well. I still get lost somewhere every time I try to go to the bathroom. But I'm quickly figuring out where every office and room in the building is now. By accidentally stumbling into them while looking for a toilet, that is. Anyway, I'll run to the board where Mary calls my office and begin setting up the wireless connection. It should only take a few minutes, the most. I hope you don't mind it quiet until then. It's fine. I'll manage. Thanks for everything, Nats. Talk to you soon. Bye. Talk to you soon, friend. And we can stop here for now. All right. Technically, the first chapter goes on for like five more minutes, but it's fine if we end it here because okay. that way, like, it's basically just gonna be a small recap of everything that's gonna happen so far. We might have, we might as well save it for next video. For next video. Okay, that sounds good. Wow, what a uh, <laughs> what a video. Yeah, we got to meet the CEO, and he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And trust me, this isn't even, like, this is, like, 10% of what's currently out there right now for the VN. God, that's Things crazy. Things get way crazier from here. Oh, that's but this awesome. Was already pretty, well, this was already pretty nice, right? Oh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. We're getting some nice drama and some cool exposition that doesn't feel weird. I love the character art, too. Yeah, I'm loving it, too. Nats is absolutely adorable. Ah, uh, thanks. I know her her whole character design is just basically best girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I have a best girl before her, but I'm probably can I'm probably the only one who thinks that. And don't worry, we're gonna meet her soonish. So, ooh, we'll interesting. See. I can't wait to I can't wait to meet best girl for Sedge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people are gonna roast me in the comments so much oh know. my god okay yeah I'm, now i'm really interested <laughs> all right well let's hope that we get a new chance to continue this playthrough soon then oh we will thank you so much sedge and thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and ring that notification bell to the next video i love you all i'll see you next time Bye bye, bye, -bye.